Okay, I think we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this uh, fun Tuesday evening chat. Usually, we host uh, grandmasters and we talk about different stuff. Today, we're talking about movies, AI movies, what they get right, what they get wrong. Uh, can we even get to Skynet? Are the grandmasters in secret working on it? Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out today. And I'll start by introducing the panel, uh, going in alphabetical order. Uh, we're joined by Arno Candel, who's the CTO of H2O.ai. Welcome, Arno. Hi everyone. Followed by Dimitri Gordev, who's a data scientist and a Kaggle Grandmaster in the top five, top five of world rankings. Dimitri, thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, thank you. And Gabor Fodor, uh, you might know him as Beluja from Kaggle. He, at his uh, peak rank, was also in the top five, top five of world rankings, and is also a data scientist at H2. Welcome, Gabor. Hi everyone. So uh, this this was a fun assignment for me. I got to watch so many movies as work, but I'd like to start. I'd like to start by asking you, what are your favorite AI movies? What what did you like most about them? Okay, I'll go first. Um, sure. Well, I I grew up with Terminator, right? Terminator Two was a big one. That was the first movie I watched three times in the movie theaters, and that was definitely a, you know. A, mind-blowing experience mostly for the graphics and you know the special effects not so much about the doom and gloom you know in the end it was a, a good ending anyway like most hollywood movies at the time so it wasn't yet an actual like doomsday prognosis as much even though it was a bit you know it looked pretty bad in the beginning of the movie of course when all the nukes were falling but i would say overall it was a win for the humanity so it was it was kind of like that but then I watched Ex Machina a few months ago, and I was, you know, that was quite interesting to see potentially the, the twist at the end was, you know, we don't want to give away too much right now, but it was a very interesting real AI kind of moment. So those two are my favorites. There's a secret in our Slack that Arno is a AI part by driverless AI. If he is, he's already passed the Turing test. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri, do you have a favorite that you'd like to point out? Um, I think I was also growing up like watching action movies like Terminator. So it's kind of just something definitely I know from from younger years. Um, but like surprisingly, I would um, I would mention Ex Machina or Ex Machina. I don't know how to pronounce that as uh, probably my favorite one, though I watched it like last week or so. So it was quite recently. Uh, because like all the action movies were about the action back then and basically the evil AI taking over the world and threatening to kill everyone and the happy ending is wiping the AI off the planet. And like recently the movies are trying to get a little bit more thoughts about the topic, I would say, probably, I'm guessing. And um, like another one that comes to my head was iRobot, I think, but it was also an action movie where they tried to add a little bit of a plot and a twist and maybe to think a little bit about it, about, but still the, the humanity is trying to uh, destroy the robots basically and save the humanity again. And Ex Machina, um, yeah, that would be probably the top one for me. I don't think there's any movie where we have a happy ending with both the robots and humans living in a happy uh, continuum. Like it's it's either A or B. It's always the versus in all movies. I think. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we had this discussion before the call, and I raised the question: well, Was there any movie or TV <laughs> series with a happy ending? Um, yeah, the good question is: What a happy ending? Is it good for AI? Is it good for humanity? Um, <laughs> usually, it tend to be tends to be good for either of the two, but not both. For sure. Gabor, uh, over to you. Yeah, as a kid, it's difficult to define AI, but if talking robots are around, then probably Star Wars was my first movie related to AI, or at least intelligent robots. I, I like that one. I also uh, like uh, Ex Machina uh, pretty much, but uh, I prefer probably the Black Mirror series. They are not always about uh, AI, Sometimes they are uh, about technology and uh, society, but many of those episodes uh, have uh, AI components as well. Zooming out, like Black Mirror does this really good job, and I don't recommend anyone should binge watch it. Like it's 
they're cool but uh, you know they leave you a weird with a weird headache sometimes uh, maybe just me but are you ever creeped out with this negative side of things uh, or just zooming out what does ai mean to you when you first thought of ai broadly speaking leaving aside what we can do to, to today probably something intelligent uh, which was artificially created so when i was a kid ai is yeah robot but not necessarily shaped as a human so it might be a computer which is capable of um of imitating a human maybe having a conscious so not focused on doing one thing but kind of a general purpose uh, being um but i think like today what we uh, what we mean when we say ai is a completely different thing it's way way more specific um and i wonder if these two terms the one i that i had in mind when i was a kid and the one that i use now for work are they close are they far apart is one going to lead to the other yeah, yeah I, sorry i, I so, just uh, prepared for the call and uh, i checked the uh, wikipedia so that that's how i got some knowledge about the ai and i liked uh, pretty much the definition or the differences between artificial general intelligence and the narrow uh, ai uh, products or narrow ai use cases we usually have to deal uh, on an everyday basis so none of us uh, uh, is actually an a artificial general inter intelligence researcher but uh, many of uh, the tasks we are working on uh, at h2 or at kaggle were considered uh, some kind of uh, milestone uh, in the, in the previous past or it or it was even uh, uh, thought as impossible uh, for for machines so that's the main difference i guess Right. just to add for the audience uh, sorry anu just to add for the audience agi is this thought that is represented in movie that you know that ai can do anything it's it's just intelligent and when we speak of ai sometimes it's it's just narrow ai it can do minute things on minute problems not not everything that you can dream of uh, sorry anu please go ahead right i think true artificial general intelligence uh, is only understood by very few people right you have to almost be a philosopher or uh, some kind of uh, you know mental you know guru to understand what it even means to be human actually right like most people today are living very shallow lives i would say social media and so on. they're not really thinking about what is it to be human what makes me different than a machine so when i was a kid we thought you know having a little tv that's portable would be cool right and now everybody has iphones you know they can take pictures they can store their whole life you all email everything it's already kind of cool self driving cars no one thought about it I mean in the 80s they were developing prototypes right in the German autobahns driving cars with like cameras and stuff but that you would actually have a car you can just drive around with uh, without you being on the steering wheel that's already kind of cool so this is almost a happy ending we're already living in where machines and humans interact nicely in a way the question i guess is what's going to be left for us in the end right and that will be less and less boring stuff you can say but also maybe less and less fun stuff like if all we do is watch tv that some machine serves us is that more or less fun than being outdoors playing with you know trees and you know other people so um i think some of it is is taking away because our brains work in that way that we say oh yeah it's nice to do this you know let me do more of it so the addiction takes over um luckily i don't personally do this as much as i can talk about it but the i think there is a danger to social media in general right as we've seen in, in many other movies in the past about that topic it's not necessarily ai per se but it's it's driven by ai in the background so the the general intelligence isn't really the threat yet um if if and if it was a threat it, it's still too far out nobody really knows what that means like even the robots today they don't speak like real people right they don't make the affectation they don't stutter they don't you know think like oh maybe uh, you know i should say it in a slightly different way or something they don't have to finesse yet so it's 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 more like we we maybe just there's more and more intelligence around us that is trying to steer us and i think that's the bigger challenge for the next decade or two I I'm a zoomer like my my first thought of uh, AI was Jarvis like I grew up in this Iron Man era so 
of course my thought was just having this intelligent assistant that can do everything for you what's your thought of uh i know actually mentioned this what makes us human and what parts of ai will we be able to do uh like what we see in business versus what we see in movies we're working on very cutting edge stuff here at h2 all three people in this call so w- w- what's the difference and uh, how much of it will we be able to do if at all I think quite a lot. I mean, even like looking at Jarvis, um, look at all the devices we have. If we're not there yet, we're moving in this direction quite rapidly. Uh, so everything with regards to like searching uh, information for you, browsing, uh, browsing for answers to the questions. So everything with regards to like uh, solving a particular task, which we can express either by words or I don't know, clicking buttons. This is pretty much what we're doing and dealing with today. And if it's not solved, it is getting to the levels where it can compete with humans in doing so. So for me, the, the question is like, how far, how long would it take us to, to make like a next leap and to, um, to be able to solve a more like generally stated problems, not something we can express in uh, in a statement or in a number or in a goal. Yeah, I was watching, uh, I think this was on a podcast interview by someone where someone mentioned that we have state of the art chess boards, but if you change the board configuration, let's say you just remove one row, things break. And when, when can we get beyond that? We've already done a lot, historically speaking, but I think maybe it'll just be slow incremental uh, increases towards the future. Yeah, uh, I recall an, an example um, that was my university philosophy teacher and he was playing with, and that was a long time ago, way, way before GPT. Uh, he was playing with a service which generates um, human-like texts when you need just to specify the area. And he was generating philosophy texts and he was making thought that some, some of the colleagues cannot distinguish these texts from from the text of their colleagues. And yeah, but he was making fun of the philosophy partially, I guess. Um, and nowadays we have really good uh, conscious text gen- generated by, by computers. And this is like a huge leap forward. Uh, Gabor, I know any thoughts on AI in business versus AI in movies, that gap, that huge gap that we have? Yeah, for, for me, the main difference is the ability to learn. Uh, and I cannot even imagine what could happen af- after that leap, if, if we ever uh, are able, able to, to leave that. Because uh, I have seen uh, tremendous progress uh, even during the last decade, uh, during my professional experience, uh, for example, in the NLP uh, uh, space. But uh, to, to define uh, AI or, or distinguish AI from human, the most common example is, is, is the Turing test. So creating chatbots that cannot be distinguished uh, from human performance, I think it's quite uh, possible or, or achievable, especially we are leaving behind the ethics and we are collecting all the data we are have, have today in Facebook and, and all, all the chat messages, probably it, it would be an easier uh, thing to do, but uh, if, if we are talking about uh, learning from that or, or abstraction or even just uh, imagine a, a machine that can read uh, typewritten uh, messages but it, it cannot understand the sounds uh, for a human child it usually takes two three years from the very very uh, zero knowledge to learn a, a language without even having supervised in- input so that level of uh, sophistication or, or difficulty is, is uh, quite complex. Yeah, I think it's it's technically doable, let's say, to make a robot that speaks like in the movie Her or something like a, you know, a voice that sounds nice and sometimes makes it like jealous comments or, you know, it, you know says like, uh, uh, or takes a breath, like all that you can implant basically, right? The question is, when do you do it? someone has to program it too, or if, if that's all gathered from the data, you could say, well, if I have enough data, I can learn when people do it, so I will do it also, or you know, I can tell from the reaction of the other person that it was jealousy or not. It's all just classification. So arguably you could say with, with enough training data, you can learn 
when to behave like a human and what that means at the moment. But you will still not, you know, be able to plug yourself into the wall to power you up and, you know, and then build another clone of you in the factory and all that. Like there's, there's nobody making microchips on a, on a, on a, you know, on some kind of inside of a robot, right? It's always outside of the robot. So that kind of step to self-replicate and all that, that's probably hundred years away or whatever, like it's probably not as close, but the, the technology to fake a human will get better. But it's still disappointingly bad. Like every time you see these robots talking to each other, it's it's all weird and awkward, right? So it's not as easy as it might sound. Makes for solid memes on social media for sure. One Sorry. comment here. I have a vacuum cleaner robot at my apartment and it can go back to the dock station and charge itself. So we, we made one step forward in this direction of <laughs> robots like maintaining them themselves. And it's scary sometimes. Yes, and it's pretty good. It, it avoids obstacles with radar and lidar and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's quite uh, it's quite smart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a question from the YouTube chat, and to everyone watching, please keep them coming. We'll definitely keeping an eye out. Uh, I think all of these movies have like a weird ending. Black Mirror episodes for sure, where things go very very wrong. So just I think this will be on a philosophical level. But how do we ensure that these things have a moral compass? So for example, your uh, vacuum cleaner. doesn't go all mad and leave all your house dirty because you, you don't clean it as much and it gets mad and it just litters everywhere for example there's a, some kind of a yeah there's a there's a sorry there's a there's a incentive for a company selling the robot to not screw up right so as long as we want a robot that cleans that's what they will make let's say so there's there's extra effort to make it jump rope that you don't want it to or something like it's not necessary but yeah go ahead okay. i was just wondering if it's possible i mean if your vacuum cleaner robot takes you as a hostage and uh, forces you to buy more of them you never know who produced it right you never know how it was learned and um how can how can we control that yeah i think uh, for the narrow ai use cases we have even for self driving cars usually regulation and safety measures are uh, quite important and uh, that's also why it's a bit slower progress because we have to make 100 close to 100% sure that the technology is safe but when we are talking about uh, uh, the general intelligence or learning machines usually in the movies these robots or, or they have some rules programmed in, in their operating system so they cannot harm humans or some other additional rules but it's difficult to even uh, for me to imagine how could that stop uh, from skynet happening at, at the end so if we just give uh, the most efficient ai solution uh, objective function to optimize let's say stop uh, global warming i would be very afraid of the end result uh, and the steps it, it would make to it happen right yeah, yeah like you don't let the machines decide everything that's right and i guess if you if you build a system that can take all these actions and then act on them and have all the consequences and then again act on all that as well like keep keeps on top of everything that would be the scary part right yeah. like the mitri said there will be a uh, vacuum cleaner robot uprising <laughs> maybe yeah, no. maybe not it's not hard to make a little drone that has an explosive in it and it flies to your head and detonates it right that's not hard like you guys could probably build this if you have to right it's all vision and you know moment then you trigger some button and it triggers the milligram or couple grams of explosives that is probably not as hard the hard part is that um you know you would have to distribute it and use it against the world and so on and somebody will stop it like the humans as a whole will will stop it i guess the, the hard part will be when the machines keep making more and more of them so that you can't stop it right so no human would ever be able to stop this factory let's say that's the scary moment which you would have to be quite powerless but yeah if they had more and more drones flying around everywhere and nobody can come close to that factory not even with protection and all that then then we have a problem right but that that thing inside would have to be designed by some human first to do that all mm. right it, i don't think it will just self learn to be defensive about that drone factory so it needs an evil actor 
and I think the world has a duty to monitor all evil actors, at least to some extent, right? That this doesn't happen. This is a comment from LinkedIn as well, where they mention. I think this was in a movie as well. I'm not sure if these exist, but Asimov's Laws of Robotics, where you know you essentially lay down principles for uh, this AI that can think essentially and consciousness, artificial consciousness, uh, that it shouldn't harm human, uh, it can't harm its creator, and it can't harm the ecosystem. Maybe that would be a way, but uh, what if things are able to justify to themselves these things that uh, they need to override in law for some some objective? What is the ecosystem anyway, right? You could say, well, it's just uh, you know the tree over there remains fine or something like. It's hard to know what's uh, the definitions will be blurred, I guess. Yeah, even for self-driving cars, it's usually an ethical issue whether it should protect the owner of the car or the pedestrian on, on the street. And uh, also, there are different uh, ethical studies where, uh, in some cultures, usually the younger uh, pedestrians are considered uh, a higher value for the so society. And uh, to protect more in other cultures, usually the elder people are considered to uh, more, more protectable. So it's it's quite difficult uh, to get these rules in the reality, in the real world, when basically everything could, could happen. And even if you have these rules clearly stated, and I think the question is referring to at least um, iRobot movie, I think that Thank was you. focused on these rules and spoiler alert, but I think most of the people saw the movie. Um, I think the, the movie ended up with like robots trying to take over the humanity in order to protect it. So uh, they ended up like in uh, achieving the goal in a twisted way. And I think many movies and books are focused on the idea on that, even if we uh, clearly state a very peaceful and very humanitarian goal, uh, a complicated system might find out a very twisted way to, to achieve this goal, uh, which we cannot foresee when we state the laws. So just like going back to the earlier question, we, we were talking about this, that uh, people collecting data and working on evil applications. Were there any episodes from Black Mirror, let's say, that creeped you out really? All of those are very creepy, but anything that really stood out uh, in terms of AI or just, just any other thought that you've had that was scary? Most of them are quite scary, <laughs> I would say, or, or at, <laughs> at least uh, they have a dark, ironic sense of humor. But my favorite one is probably Be Right Back. It's about creating a conversational AI robot based on your social media history to preserve you even after, you de after your death. And the, the company is, is creating these clones or artificial humans, uh, filling them with knowledge about you, your memories, your way of talk or figure, uh, uh, speech. And uh, What's funny is, or, or scary is that uh, this, this year I have seen an article that Microsoft has a patent uh, for that very product. So it's, it, it, it also could go wrong. Could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's my favorite example. I haven't watched too many Black Mirror episodes because they, they really kind of scare me off. So it's not something I prefer to watch before I go to sleep, but Be Right Back is quite an impressive one and mostly terrifies me by how close we are to, uh, to achieving that. Uh, I mean, disregarding like the whole robotic part of the movie with regards to creating basically a system which would imitate uh, a deceased person with uh, speech. It's something which we can, which people already tr try to do basically. And if um, 20 years ago, uh, people were like mentioning a hypothetical future when the computers will be large enough so you can copy your brain to a computer and leave as a computer, that sounded like, uh, like very, that sounded really futuristic. But right now we're facing uh, the time where 
parts of it can be already, well, to a certain extent implemented and br brought to life. And even some companies are, are um, trying to patent the, the, the technology to do so. So yeah, Black Mirror is not something I would definitely recommend, recommend watching, especially before going to sleep. <laughs> That's to be at some point before you sleep, yes, but not too close. I, I haven't watched it at all, um, but I guess the idea is, I mean, photography was kind of scary in the beginning, right? People were shocked that you could take a picture of someone and like hold it up and say, that's you. And like, whoa, 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 wait a second, what's that? It's like devil's work and so on. So now we are getting closer. You have 3D objects, you 3D print yourself as a little action, you know, hero. But now we can also, you know, get closer. But I think it's still quite shallow, right? If you had to do it today, what would it take to build this, right? You could say, well, sure, I, I get all the social media, all the pictures, all the voice, and then uh, you synthesize it together and some some stuff comes out, but will it be coherent enough that it will fool you? Would you think, how, how long would you think it will take before you actually could show up at your own home um, and your family, like behind the doors, of course, no robot, right? Just a voice machine, whatever. Will the family of yours think that it's you Probably yes, right in the beginning. If you just said, hey, I'm here, it's all good. Yeah, leave me alone. I'm in the room. You know, that that might be fine. But um, once they say, are you coming tonight to, you know, let's this sort of place, something, you're going to say like, no, no, I'm fine or something at best, right? And at worst, you will say, I'm feeling great or you know, some some garbage, like it becomes like an Alzheimer patient or something that you, you feel already something is not quite right, right? So how, how much deeper would you have to probe um, before you can find the issues. And I think it will be quite a long time before we can go very deep, right? Unless you dump everything you've ever done on a computer and every, every experience you wrote it down as a perfect you know, story of your life in voice and sound. Like if you dump yourself to digital media, maybe that will make it easier for us to reproduce you. But then your life is gone. Like all your entire life was spent dumping yourself to digital media, right? Is, is that a good life worth living just so that you can live forever, but you never actually lived? So it's kind of that balance of you can't just extract all your brain out yet, but there is something obviously the brain link or what is it called? Um, effort to, if you can look up and down and the mouse cursor moves and stuff like that. There are some things to connect, but that's also quite far. Uh, a new link? Neuralink, yes, yes. So you can you can control things with your mind, but they're not able to suck out all of your memories yet, or something. It's not it's not a matrix or a tensor that's stored, right? It's just a bunch of connections. So it's it's going to be hard to get access to that. And I think yeah, the, the way I mentioned with dumping it out by text and voice is probably not a very efficient way. But if we get to the next level where we can suck out all your brain at once and then make a clone of you, that would consider one of those. Uh, <laughs> that would be a scary moment, right? For sure. There's a question from YouTube that I think is pretty interesting. Just a comment, I think, uh, based on instability. I think they're assuming that uh, we humans mess up in a big way and there's war or disease. Wouldn't it be better if just robots take, a, take over and uh, they, they just take care of everything? I have seen a study or uh, a few weeks back uh, in, in Europe, uh, people were asked whether they would replace their government uh, for AI, and 51%, uh, so the majority, <laughs> voted for AI. So it, it just showed, showed me two, two different things. That First, that uh, people in general are not uh, quite necessary uh, in the knowledge of what the current state is for AI, because we are very far uh, from making actual policy decisions. Uh, unless it's completely random. And uh, the, the other hand is that it, there is a general uh, disrespect or, or disbelief in, in the political uh, elite. So yeah, from some perspective, uh, robots could be better than the status quo, but uh, I would be still uh, very scared of, of, of that word. Agree with Gabor here, Jan. So certain parts and activities which are, well, better to uh, assign to someone or something that can do it um, independent of the emotions, probably that's the way to go. But like fully mm. taking over the control of um, 
what's happening around that might be a very scary thought and a very um, challenging thing to do as there might be a twisted way um, this thing to end basically i mean to also push back on that what makes us human is also emotion so sometimes you have to think of the humans and they make a decision uh, if you leave that out then you could also mess up in different ways so it's it's a mix i think well empathy requires you to know what's going on with the other person right it's not just about being on their side or whatever it's to actually understand them which means you actually have to listen first and to li- and the robot will have a hard time listening to all the billions of people at once to make sure that they all evenly fairly given you know better food or better access to this and that but you could argue that some kind of a monetary system where everybody gets you know money given to them from the system and that's that's what you need to spend it's all online all digital uh, and that's your, your your socialism of the future where everybody's taken care of uh, something like that could be potentially happening right eventually where, where based on their needs in their country or their place they, they will be living a, a normal life let's say nobody has to be poverty level anymore so that would help already if, if they have access to money somehow but it shouldn't be just that money they should also be able to you know have a chance to do more and becomes uh, more than just dependence so i think it's going to be there, there is hopefully some kind of a um a net that catches the the, the people that don't have uh, support from the government right that's that's clearly seen today that we need that worldwide and not just elsewhere also here there, are, there definitely are people who are not doing well and an ai system could be better than the, the current state of affairs where it's all just other people being greedy let's say for sure that's that's why we also particularly at test also try to do ai for good as we call it and uh, we we think that ai can be used for good and we're already trying to be a part of it the thing that scares me the most it's it's sort of a funny joke but just because ai is getting so good at games like they would become unplayable that every time you play a game you would get beaten at it uh jokes aside this i think would be a broader philosophical question uh and to everyone watching live uh we're at the end of questions so please leave a few questions if you want us to take them the question is do you think we're in a simulation inside of an ai and we're just uh simulated intelligences so like we we don't really exist in this world it's just a simulation and we're existing inside of a bigger ai yeah yeah <laughs> it is but possible the universe could be like that right like not simulation but what does it mean like let's say there's this multitude of universes when the big bang happened we just got one little bubble bubble out of a bath tub full of bubbles and and we are now in one of them and we evolved from the you know the the formation of matter and so on and i'm a physicist so i have you know, some background but basically you could say evolution made us and that's great but now there's another universe somewhere where different evolutionary mechanisms slightly different maybe slightly different constants in nature make slightly different things and the thing that made the whole thing the bathtub of the universe is basically that's the actual simulator of the whole thing right so but what does it mean simulator it's not a, it's not a computer game nobody had bits and bytes up there or whatever but it's it, it could be that we are just one form of you know being and space and time is just some dimensions of some higher dimensional thing which in the end it, it, like i said it becomes uh, philosophical right it's it's hard to argue what is time and space and all that and people who do ramble about this everywhere online most of them don't understand the, the actual details so you could argue they are on the same level as a robot mumbling about it right so that's why we say oh it's it's superhuman you know what that robot talks about all the stuff it's amazing it's, but the people judging that robot don't actually know either what it should be so everybody's just in that you know it's like the 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 plebs or something that the latin emperors called it right it's just the people that play games and they give them bread and they're happy basically and it could be that we are just all you know the nobodies and actually don't understand anything like the fish inside of the fish bowl not knowing what water is so it's, in that sense i could see that yes we we don't understand enough and we are just part of the whole thing and that's it mm-hmm. but i wouldn't call it simulation it's just that we are a non not complete um thing <laughs> <laughs>
right? They're only a piece of something. Uh, Dimitri, you, you had something to say earlier? Um, it is, yeah, uh, I just said that it's possible, but like I prefer to think we're kind of in a, if I can phrase that uh, thought from Arna, we're in the physical simulation, not computer simulation. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to explore around us. Again, I, I think this was from some, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately, but what if reality, like we, thoughts are being put inside of our head and things are just being created. Uh, again, this, this is like a very random philosophical question, but it could be a physical simulation. It could be uh, a digital simulation that we're living in. Uh, there's, there's no difference. Like what is even reality? Then that becomes the question very broadly speaking. It's all made up by your neurons in your brain right now, right? So even the vision, if you were making a handstand all day long after the day, the, day, the whole vision would flick apparently, right? I'm not sure that's true, but I heard that somewhere. So after a while, your brain will just flip the uh, Y axis of your vision system. So it's quite dynamic and yeah, it's sure it's made up in your neural system in your brain, right? So it, it, there is no, there is no vision per se, there's just photons flying around and electrons flying around, more or less. The protons and neutrons are sitting still, unless you're being radioactively destroyed. <laughs> but otherwise, I would say, um, yeah, how do we live in this electromagnetic, you know, world um, and see stuff or feel stuff or hear stuff? Even the phonons, the, the air waves and stuff, they're all like, you know, matter oscillating mm. and so on. So in the end, we are really just perceiving the the infinitesimal small scale of things at our bigger level. And we somehow were made to feel that, but we don't feel the waves of the universe at the bigger scale, right? We only feel the, the tiny scale stuff, like nanometers to, I don't know, meters, let's say. And we have no clue what else happens with the rest. Also over time, right? We don't know what happened hundred million years ago either. So we're just right now. And we, that's why we, we only perceive a small fraction of the reality. And we think that's everything. So in that sense, we are being dribbled these little electromagnetic waves, right? But that's all mm. just an oscillation of the ping pong, you know, effect. And in a, in a closed room, when you throw a billion balls, they all just bounce around. And we're just looking at all that, right? Basically, that's already true. We're just watching the universe unravel its physics uh, behavior that was deterministic, more or less, up to like probabilities, right? Quantum electrodynamics is all probabilities of where stuff is. So every electron and photon has a probability of being there at some point. And that's all mathematical and, and given. There's no questions. That's the most exact theory that has been verified to 10 digits after decimal. So there's that, that thing is what happens. And now the only question is how complicated are the effects when this all happens at once on a massive scale and you're looking at everything locally, what you're seeing is all based on science. And who triggered it? Well, our collective, you know, random world basically made it like that. And we had some say in that by moving some matter around so you would argue it's it's all uh, it's all happening because because it's happening. Now, who who made it happen? That's you could say the game player or whatever, right? It's that's why we have a drive to believe there's something else that caused all this. It would be too much to assume it's just random. But then Einstein said God doesn't play dice, right? So he, it's, it's all there's all there's, it becomes very philosophical. And physics at its core is philosophy then. Did, did science uh, did, did the rules of science come after observation or did someone put those rules and now we're just recreating them i think i could write this down somewhere that uh, you just mentioned that we're observing infinitely smaller things from our bigger level that's that's such a beautiful thing to just think about i i, I think that just interesting yeah, okay. uh, it's electrons and photons in our lives right basically that, that happen interacting 
electrons and photons interacting. That's our daily lives, Ex except for gravity. That's also somewhat an effect. But all the biology, uh, vision, all the things you touch, all the forces, mostly because of those things. Okay, I think uh, we've gone through all of the questions. Just as a reminder to anyone listening, I could squeeze in one last question if you want. But uh, you tell us if the grandmasters passed the Turing test. Uh, I'll never know. I'm, I'm still on the pursuit of finding out if they're robots or not. I'll do a quick mention of all of their profiles if I can. Arno is on Twitter at Arno Candle. Dimitri is on Twitter as dott.1718. And Gabor is on Twitter as Beluja for door, so his Kaggle name followed by that. You can find all of them on Kaggle as well. And of course, you can tune into our next live. Let us know if you enjoyed this. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for this interesting uh, and also philosophical discussion. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.